house has risen up and shut the door and you begin to stand outside and knock at the door saying, Lord, Lord. So these people here call him Lord. Could this be us that call him Lord? No, it can't. Can't. It can't be us. If he means us are those who have believed unto eternal life. We're not going to knock and say, let us in, let us in. Why? Because we've done the will of the Father. What's the will of the Father? John 6, 38 through 40. Believe on Jesus Christ. The people who knock and say, Lord, Lord, let us in, let us in, are the ones who trusted in their works to save them, which is the exact message that this man is preaching. Hey guys, welcome back to Bible Line. I'm your host, Pastor Jesse Martinez. Today we're doing another reaction video in our long Pastor Reacts series. Thank you to all of you who continually send us content. I do think this is important. I think it's good that we stand up and make sure that we're clarifying what other people say is clear scripture. Isaiah Saldivar. That's who we are looking at today. Now, I'm subscribed to Norm Diamante's channel, subscribed to some other channels too, and I see this very video has been reacted to. It's not my job or my goal here to do a better job than them. I just simply want to add to what we're looking at. And the type of critique that I like is long form uh, because I think these guys like to pop out these, uh, you know, guys like Isaiah here, they pop out these highly edited, highly curated videos, um, but there's not a lot of explanation. So I want to take time to explain these things. There is one passage here at the end that Isaiah goes into detail about that we're not going to cover in this video. That deserves its own separate video, and I'll let you know when we get to that part. But this is a video that we're going to react to really the entire thing. Usually um, our editor, Trent, he kind of cuts stuff up, and we want to get you know the meat of things, but this video, it just deserves to stand alone. And I want you to see the manipulation, the lack of scriptural application, and then I want you to be comforted by what the scripture does say. These types of videos, they're very popular because they spark fear. They make people question their salvation. And there's no better way to enslave an audience to you than to make them doubt whether they're going to go to heaven or whether they'll go to hell. What else would there be if we're not sure that we're going to heaven? We'd be worried about everything. But I'm going to let him start, and we are going to pause a lot, but just you know, get comfortable. If you need to come back to this video when you have more time, I'd strongly encourage you to just walk along with me today as we listen and go through the word. Here we go. Okay, this is not a video I'm excited to make, but it's something I've needed to make for a long time. This is one of those videos that you're going to want to watch till the end because you can be, you might be in danger. So right off the bat, we're fear mongering. Okay. You know, he doesn't have any fancy intro. There's no music. This entire video, I'll give props to him. He's got no advertisement for his channel, none of that. So I, I, I think he's probably genuine in his approach here, but he's selling fear. He's hoping that Christians, as the title says, will be so unsure of their salvation that they'll watch him to see, okay, oh, whew, I'm not doing those things, so I'm still going to heaven. Or, oh my goodness, I am doing those things. I, I must be going to hell. I thought I was going to heaven. I got to turn. I got to continue to follow Isaiah because he's going to lead me in the way of righteousness. Just be careful when people start off content like this. It's more than clip, uh, click baiting. It's more than trying to just rope a viewer in. This is selling fear. And this next statement here you're going to hear, uh, I think if you're paying attention, this should be alarming to you. There are many people that watch me that call themselves Christians that are believers but might end up dying and going to hell. I don't think I can name something more terrifying than standing before God on judgment day, thinking you're going to heaven when in reality you're actually going to hell. So that's a lot. We are 27 seconds into this video and you can already see there's an improper application of theology. First of all, the believer will not stand before God at the great white throne judgment, which is referred to throughout scripture as the judgment day. The believer will not stand and be judged at that judgment. The believer will stand at a judgment. It is the judgment seat of Christ, which is detailed in 1 Corinthians chapter 3. It's also briefly mentioned in 2 Corinthians chapter 5. And that is where the believer will be rewarded for their profitability here on earth. There is no place in scripture where a believer, a born-again 
child of God should ever fear their salvation. As a matter of, as a matter of fact, 1 John chapter 5 and verse 13 says this, These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. So if you've put your trust in Jesus Christ as the Son of God who died on the cross, was buried, and rose again for the payment of your sins, if you believe on him, the Bible says, not Isaiah, the Bible says, you can know that you have eternal life. Look in 1 John chapter 5 and verse 10. He that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in himself. What is the witness? It's the third part of the Trinity. The Holy Spirit witnesses through you that you are a child of God. Not through your actions, but through the fact that you are indwelt with the Holy Spirit. Continue on in verse 10. He that believeth not God hath made him a liar. So the only kind of person that should be afraid is the person who is in active unbelief. They've never believed on Jesus Christ. That person in active unbelief, the word of God says they are standing in judgment of God, calling him a liar. So the only people that should be afraid as far as, as to whether they're going to go to hell is the person who hasn't believed. But Isaiah says here there are believers, he uses air quotes, Christians who are going to stand before God and end up going to hell. Right away, you know, any scripture that he gives you, he's going to misapply it. And again, I'm not mad at Isaiah. I don't think that he um, should go to hell for this. I am genuinely praying that he comes to a change of mind because he's got a very large audience and he's got a lot of power and sway, but he's being used of the devil right now. The devil is, is just using this guy to promote things that are not in the scripture. The Bible says you can know that you have eternal life and that eternal life is guaranteed by God. Your assurance is gained through knowledge of the word, but your eternal security is taken care of. How do I know? He died and rose again for me. He paid for all my sin. I have eternal life because I have believed. Isaiah is going to try to twist that, make you doubt. I mean, he's going to make you look at your works. Let's let him continue. I'm going to show you five verses. These are what I call landmine verses. In other words, if I invited you over to my house and said, hey, I want you to come hang out, but there's five landmines hidden throughout my house. Let's have fun. You would be like, I want to know where these landmines are so I can avoid them. You want to. All right, we're continuing to amp up what he's going to talk about here. I'm to avoid being one of these people that we're going to talk about in these verses. No fancy editing in this. I just want to share my heart with you. I don't want no one to be deceived. I don't want no one to go to hell. And there's an easy gospel going around that says, everybody's saved. Easy is the way. It's very close to universalism. Jesus did not teach easy is the way. In fact, Jesus said difficult is the way. Now that's a direct attack at you know that's a direct attack at salvation by faith alone in Christ alone. And that's why Jesus says the way is hard. <laughs> he says the way is hard because so many people are going to doubt that it's simply believing on him. These guys don't realize they are a product of their own deception. And you got you can't fall for it. And you say, "Well, I just got to get, you know, I got to get in the weight room of free grace theology. That'll make me sharper." No, just read the word. Read the word and apply what it says. It speaks for itself. Don't forget, if you're new here to Bible Line, to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell. Make sure you set it to all so whenever we post anything, you get an alert. Also, make sure to like, comment, and share this video. That helps get the video out to new people that have not discovered the channel. And also, we appreciate all the feedback and discussion in the comment section. It's good. If you have a question or a video that you would like me to answer or react to, send us an email, questions at BibleLineMinistries.org, right here on the screen, and we'll do our best to get you a written response and make a video in response as well. Let's get back to today's react. That, that word is going to last forever. You don't have to dive into the free grace camp to be sure of your salvation. You need to dive into the word. The word is what gives us the assurance. But this guy, he says it right there. He's like, you know, easy is the way, easy is the way. Just because believing on Jesus Christ is an easy command doesn't mean that it's not difficult. It's difficult because of all of the confusion out there. You got to turn from your sin, they say. You got to ask Jesus into your heart, they say. You got to prove that you're really saved by doing good works and persevering to the end, they say. 
That's what makes belief hard because of all the work that's out there to make that something more than what it is. He says he's just trying to share his heart. He, and, and this reveals to me he probably doesn't understand the gospel correctly. He's probably depending on the fact that he'll stand before God and say, I had an influential YouTube channel. Did I not do all these things for you? And if he dies in a state of unbelief that Jesus Christ has died on the cross for his sins as the Son of God, if he stands before God without believing on Jesus, he will be condemned. That's why my heart's desire is for this man to get saved. But we got to expose the error. Remove yourself from him, you know, and just look at what he says. That's what we'll do. I don't take any pleasure in making this. This might be one of my most serious videos I've ever made. So I really want you to take it serious. And I want you to really think about the verses that I'm going to give you and what we're going to talk about. So I want to start with, let me just put it on screen to help you here. First one we're going to go with is Luke 13, 22. And he went through the cities and villages, teaching and journeying towards Jerusalem. Then one said to him, Lord, are there few who are saved? So they're asking, how many are actually saved? And he said to them, being Jesus, strive to enter through the narrow gate. For many, I say, will seek to enter and will not be able to. So there's going to be many seeking to enter, but only those that strive are going to enter. Well, we don't need to strive, brother. Well, Jesus says the opposite. When once the master of the house... So we got to stop there for a second. What he's doing here is he's taking the teaching that Jesus has said about narrow is the way, strive to enter in. This is Luke 13, 24. Strive to enter in at the straight gate. For many, I say unto you, will seek to enter in and shall not be able. Why? They come in at the wrong gate. This is a illustration of what Jesus has already said in the beginning of the chapter when he says to them in verse 5, Luke 13, 5, I tell you nay, but except a man repent, ye shall all likewise perish. And he gives an illustration of a disaster that happened, and they thought it happened to them because they were sinners. Jesus is setting up, you need to change your mind, or you're going to in likewise perish, not just physically, but spiritually. He is the way. He says that in John chapter 10 and verse 9. I am the door. You come into me, you're going to find that rest. Okay? So he's the way, the truth, and the life. What's the command he says about himself? Believe. So why would that be something that someone would have to strive to believe? Because they're striving against what their religious leaders say is acceptable. You got to keep the law. You got to be righteous like the Pharisees. No, no. You got to go against that and believe on me. Though he were dead, yet shall he live. He says that to Mary or uh, uh, to Martha in John 11. He says, believest thou this? And she believed. But what he does here is, is he says when people say we're not supposed to strive, we're not supposed to strive in our Christian life as we walk in the Spirit, but he's conflating those two things just because there's one word here, strive. So he goes, okay, it says strive, so that means it's got to be hard to get into heaven, so that means you got to live a good life to get there. No, it's hard to get into heaven because people mock believe only, because people make the word say something that it doesn't. That's why if you got saved at a young age, you should praise God for that. If there are people in your life that set you up to understand the word correctly. I know many people, many of you who are watching, you, that, that is not your case. You're coming to faith in Christ many years later in your life where you've had a bunch of untying of these uh, theological knots that have to be done. He goes on. House has risen up and shut the door and you begin to stand outside and knock at the door saying, Lord, Lord. So these people here call him Lord. Could this be us that call him Lord? No, it can't. Can't. It can't be us. If he means us are those who have believed unto eternal life, we're not going to knock and say, let us in, let us in. Why? Because we've done the will of the Father. What's the will of the Father? John 6, 38 through 40. Believe on Jesus Christ. The people who knock and say, Lord, Lord, let us in, let us in, are the ones who trusted in their works to save them, which is the exact message that this man is preaching. I'll let you, I'll let him continue. You'll see. Open for us. And he'll answer and say, I don't know you, where you are from. Then you'll begin to say, we ate and drank in your presence and you taught in our streets. We went to your services. We were at your meeting. You see how that just got conflated? Jesus is giving an example of really the children of Israel who will not get into the kingdom. And they think just because they're a part of the religious nature of the children of Israel and they're by birthright and, and physically a part of the nation of Israel, that that's enough to get them in. But they rejected him. And that's why he'll say, I never knew you. 
But what he's saying is, well, you could go to church, you could read your Bible, you could pray, all this stuff, and you still won't get in. You, know, you could say you're a born again believer. You can believe on Jesus Christ, and you won't get in. We're not. We're talking about two different audiences here. The difference is between faith in Jesus Christ and rejection of Jesus Christ. The people who reject him are going to be without. They're going to be asking to get in. They, Jesus doesn't know them. Why? Because they haven't believed. It ain't about enough works or not. Meetings. But he will say, I tell you, I do not know you where you are from. Depart from me, all of you workers of iniquity. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth when you see Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and all the prophets in the kingdom of God and you yourselves thrust out. So there's something about... So, th you know, so this is interesting. Again, in Luke chapter 13, 23, it only says, then said one unto him, Lord, are there few that be saved? We don't know if that was somebody who was a disciple, if that was just somebody who was a bystander, a believer, an unbeliever. But we know the audience is Israel. Okay, We know the audience is Jewish people. And he's coming, Jesus, as the Jewish Messiah, the Savior of the world. So what he says there in 28 is, there shall be weeping, uh, weeping and gnashing of teeth when ye shall see Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Who are those? Well, those are the patriarchs of the Jewish faith and all the prophets in the kingdom of God. What's significant about all the prophets? Israel killed them. <laughs> They, they, they killed the prophets who God was using to teach um, the proper way. And they themselves are going to be cast out. And then I don't think Isaiah covers 29, but he says, they shall come from east, west, north, south, and shall sit down in the kingdom of God. I believe that's talking about the Gentiles, the people who are not a part of Israel, but they're going to be seated um, in the kingdom of God. So what's the difference here? They didn't come in through the right way. What's the right gate? Faith in Jesus Christ. Israel rejected Jesus. They're still rejecting him today. My greatest prayer for Israel is that they will come from unbelief to belief on Jesus Christ. But you see how he twists this into something that it doesn't mean? You know, the context is not here. You know, the context of Luke chapter 13 is not the disobedient believer who is now threatened to lose their eternal life. The context is unbelieving Israel. That's the context. And Jesus is saying, you need to repent. You need to turn, you, you need, excuse me, you need to change your mind from unbelief in me to belief in me. Seeing heaven, seeing the prophets, but then you get a glimpse of the glory and you yourselves get thrown out. They will come from east and west, north and south, and sit down in the kingdom of God. And indeed, those who will be first will all those who will be first, there are first who will be last. This is scary. It's only scary. If you misapply it, Isaiah, which you have masterfully done. All right, so for t this video, we're going to stop there. Come back next week. Make sure that you're subscribed to the channel. Hit the notification bell. Uh, set it to all so that when we make a post, you know. And uh, make sure you send your questions to us, questions at BibleLineMinistries.org. But next week, we'll continue on uh, breaking down this video. And uh, I, I, I really want you to, to be here for this. I, I think it's very important. Until next time, keep looking up. Jesus Christ is coming soon. If you enjoyed today's episode of Bible Line, make sure to subscribe to the channel and share this video with a friend. Do you have a Bible question? Send us an email, questions at BibleLineMinistries.org, and we'll do our best to get you an answer. Or you can leave your question in the comments of this video. Be sure to check the links in the description for more clear Bible teaching. Bible Line is a ministry of Calvary Community Church located in Tampa, Florida.